Welcome back to Oakleaf Cakes Bake Shop. My name is Amanda. I want to show you today how to make a super cute cake for Easter. Uh, it's a little bunny hiding in a basket. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make the little basket, which is going to be made using a cupcake, and how to use chocolate buttercream, coconut, fondant, our Italian meringue buttercream to make a super cute cake for Easter. So first thing you want to do is have your cake baked. I have a vanilla yellow cake and we have that set aside. With your extra batter, one or two scoops worth, you want to have a cupcake. The cupcake is going to be your basket. Um, so we can go ahead and unwrap that. And then we're going to frost the cupcake in chocolate buttercream. And we're gonna do that first. That way it has a few minutes to chill out in the fridge before we add it to the cake. Um, chilling it in the fridge will help the buttercream get a little bit harder, stiffer, it'll be less messy when you go to put it on your cake later. So I also have a piece of wax paper. It's gonna help me lift the cake and move it around later, or the cupcake. So a little bit of buttercream. I have this lid plate that'll help me move it in and out of the fridge. Buttercream on the bottom. The buttercream that we use is an Italian meringue buttercream. Um, so we have that made already. Uh, if you need a tutorial on how to make Italian meringue buttercream, we do also have that video for you. Um, and to make a chocolate, what you do is you just add some melted uh, bittersweet chocolate, then let it cool a little bit, but not cool enough where it's hard. Um, just add a little bit of chocolate to taste until you get the right color or right flavor of chocolate that you like. To frost the cupcake, you want to do it the same way you would do a normal cake. Cover the top. It does, the top doesn't have to be as perfect because you're going to be putting the coconut grass on the top there anyways. And then frost the sides. The cupcake doesn't have as much weight to it, so it's going to want to scoot around. What you can do is just hold it from the top. And we don't need a very thick coat of frosting. What we're doing is just a crumb coat. And this is just gonna cover the cupcake so that when we add our texture basket weave on the outside, we don't see any cake showing through. And the cupcakes naturally have that basket shape where it's like, tapered down towards the bottom. So you want to kind of keep that shape as your frosting. That way it'll look more like a basket later. So now that my sides are nice and straight, then you can pull these corners in, scrape your spatula every time. And I'm just using a little miniature frosting spatula. Regular cake's going to use the big one. This is a lot easier for your cupcake. Pull that in, and it's okay if it's a little bit domed in the middle because you're going to have a pile of grass there anyways. So now we have the cupcake covered in a piping bag. I have some chocolate buttercream. So the tip you want to use, we call it the basket weave tip. Um, it's um, If you're in a teco, it's number 46, but it's basically a straight edge opening. On one side it's a smooth and the other side it has some teeth. The teeth is going to give it the texture for a basket weave. So for basket weave, you want to do a straight line up. And it's okay if it goes, sticks up above the top a little bit. We can fix that later. And then you want to make a letter E, sort of. And then where these end, you want to cover that up with another straight line. And then during your, in your gaps, you fill in overlap and go past the same distance as you did the first time and cover up those ends with another straight line and then fill in those gaps. And you want to be wiping your piping tip um, after 
after every line or every other line. That'll keep the frosting from getting too gunky on the basket weave design. Now with all these spikes sticking up, what you can do is flatten those just like you would do the top of a normal buttercream cake. Pull those in, that way they're out of your way. And then we're gonna add just the rim around the basket next. Um, so I just have a round tip, um, a, pretty, a pretty big round tip, size is kinda up to you, just to put a rim on the basket. And squeeze the frosting, turn the turntable, voila. So now that you have your basket ready, you can just set that aside. Before we put it in the fridge, we're gonna add a little bit of coconut grass. Um, so I just have some coconut shreds. You can do white grass if you must. Um, but what we have is some gel food color. I have both just a regular leaf green and an electric green to get that really bright spring green effect. So we want more of that color. All right, so now that we have our green grass, you want to put the coconut on before you put your little cake in the fridge. That way the grass will actually stick to the frosting. The amount of grass is up to you. Probably good. Okay, so this just goes in the fridge until it chills nice and hard and then we can put it on our cake later on. Bye. <laughs> All right, so now to frost the cake. For this design, I'm gonna do a color fade, which means I'm gonna put a different color on the bottom and when we scrape it smooth, the two colors will blend. So what I'm doing is doing less I'm not gonna put white on the very bottom. See how it tapers? And then I'm gonna switch to my offset spatula, the little guy, to get the pink on the bottom. So this is same buttercream. We just added some pink gel food color to get our light pink color. And same motion, just itty bitty spatula. And you wanna get the frosting on all the way around. Make sure you cover all your cake. Okay, and then once we have the same amount of frosting all the way around, then it's time to smooth it out. So if you have a dough cutter or a scraper, like this, this will be your best friend. It's a nice straight edge and it will keep your cakes nice and straight. With the scraper, you want, to, you want it to be uh, perpendicular to the table, so straight up and down. Any extra frosting you scrape will be pink and white. Just put that in your pink buttercream. It'll all mix together later. We don't want to, here we don't want to scrape off too much buttercream because we don't want our cake to show through. But before I'm done, I think I want more, this looks like a pretty straight line. I'm going to add, plus I have some spots that are kind of sunken in a little bit. They need more buttercream. I want more of an irregular edge, so I'm just going to add some spots of pink and then go again. And when you smooth out the side, you don't want to do a stop and go motion because then you get lines indentation, indented lines. <laughs> um, so if you can do it all in one motion or just really fast, smaller motions, that way you don't get the stop and go lines. Go nice and smooth. And then, Let 
of the birds are tweeting. It is an Easter cake indeed. All right, so that's the cake that can set aside for a little bit. In the, in the Easter basket, we have the grass, but we also want some bunny ears and little carrots. So we need to make those next. So to make the bunny ears and little carrots, I just went and grabbed an extra cupcake just for size reference so I know how big I want my bunny ears. I also have some toothpicks. They're gonna be what support the weight of the big floppy bunny ears. Um, and we have, bleh. I have some fondant. You can use any fondant you want. However, we make a marshmallow fondant and we do have a video on that recipe. So do that first, have your fondant ready. <laughs> Um, and then we can do the thing. So we have marshmallow fondant. It's just marshmallows and powdered sugar. It makes a little bit of mess up your kitchen, but it actually tastes really good. So I have green, uh, oh my gosh. I have orange for carrots, light pink, and white for bunny ears. So what you wanna do is just pinch off some, whatever you're not using, keep wrapped in plastic wrap. That'll keep it from drying out and you want to knead it a little bit, that way it's nice and smooth, get all your wrinkles out. A little bit of cornstarch will keep it from sticking to the table as you're working with it. So what you want is just pinch off a size, roll a quick little log and just to size it up and see if that's gonna be the right size. I think so. And you want two of similar size. I think that's probably right. If you start with a ball, then you'll get rid of those wrinkles. And then you can, from a ball, you can roll it into more of a log, teardrop shape, and it can taper at the end. And then just flatten it out. If you have all your fancy fondant tools, you could use those, but I think bunny ears are simple enough that if you didn't, if you didn't have those fancy shaping tools, you can just do the ears with your fingers. Um, so that's one. <laughs> Floppy, indeed. That one's probably too pointy. Flatten them out a little bit. Okay, that's one. One. And then, so that they stand up, if you have a toothpick and you just dip it in a little bit of water. The water will help stick the fondant to the toothpick so it doesn't just slide around. That can go like halfway up because remember you want a little bit left to stab into the cupcake. And then you can give that a little pinch onto the toothpick so that it stays. Smooth it out, make it longer if you need. You can also make these ahead of time and let them dry. That way they definitely don't totally flop on you. And the second one. Get the toothpick wet, that way it sticks. Stab it in there. Pinch it so it stays. Okay, forgot, that was my long one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And then for the middle of the ears, the pink, um, what we want is, you could use like a food color marker if you have it or some, you know, paint some food color on there. Um, but I had the pink fondant ready, so we're just gonna use that. This one, you can have a much smaller piece and you wanna roll the long little, the long shape that goes on the inside. And it can definitely be wider at the bottom So it's like this long teardrop shape. And size it up. To get these to stick, you can just dip a clean paintbrush that you only use for food <laughs> in a little bit of water. Put that right in the center. And then you can just spread it out. Cool. 
that's the center of your bunny ear. If this is going to be the floppy one, you can flop it after you get the pink in there. <laughs> that way it dries in that shape. Cool. So now we have our bunny ears. So those can be made ahead of time and they can just let dry, just be let dry. <laughs> and now we can do our carrots. So carrots, same thing, take a little piece. You want a couple carrots maybe to fit in the basket, so don't make them huge. That would be, <laughs> unless it fits, but you're in charge of your Easter basket. Start with a ball, roll it into a teardrop shape. If it gets a little sticky, then you can just use some cornstarch. That'll keep it from being too tacky. So as long as you get a nice conical teardrop shape. You can use another toothpick to give the carrot lines. Scrunch them up a little bit. Carrot number one. There's a longer guy. Give it the lines. Scrunch it up a little bit. Carrot number two. think that I need five carrots. One, two, three, four, five. Bam. <laughs> Where did those other ones come from? I, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I pre-made them. Okay. And the, the leaves on the carrots, we're just going to use some green buttercream. That way we can pipe it on in any direction we want. So those are all of our pieces. The cupcake that we have frosted in the fridge should be ready. I will go get it. I will hippity hop to the fridge. So the buttercream on my basket has hardened. That'll make it easier to plop on the cake. What we want to do is find our favorite best side. <laughs> this one. <laughs> okay and find the best front of the cake, all professional-like. Hmm, probably that side. Okay, what you want is your little offset spatula and we want to lift. If you kind of run it underneath all the way around, that'll separate it from the paper. That way you don't accidentally pull off any of those basket weaves that you spent such meticulous time doing. And then, because your cake frosting is still soft, all you have to do is squish them on. So, that's my front. This we don't need. And then, checking my front one more time. <laughs> that's the front. Okay. Then we can put our ears in. Just stab them in. Get out of the way, coconut. He's pretty cute. Okay. And then we need our carrots. So I think there needs to be a carrot on the basket. So I have green Italian meringue buttercream in the piping bag to get the fondant carrot to stick. So just a little bit. And then the piping tip that I have on, um, let me clean it so you can see it is a Teco, if you're using that is 352. It's a leaf tip. If I do a practice one on the table, you want it to come out this way and we'll do a little wiggle. That way it looks like the carrot tuft. Cute. So there you have it. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more grass towards the bottom. Accents. Go crazy with your grass. Easter grass. 
Thanks for joining us on our Easter Bunny Basket Cake tutorial. Uh, also be sure to check out our Easter Cupcakes video coming soon. And I hope you have a happy Easter. Thanks for joining us with our... <laughs> <Shut up. laughs>